got an interesting experiment to show you today. This is probably not one that you've seen before unless you're doing A-level physics or got a teacher who shows you lots and lots of interesting experiments. And I call this one the ping pong ball or electrostatic clock. So let's have a look at the apparatus. In this picture, it looks rather more complicated than it actually is, uh, but it's actually fairly simple. What we've got here is two metal plates, so just two sheets of aluminium, and they're on insulated rods, the white bits of plastic you can see. So basically, they're two pieces of uh, metal just held up in space, not touching anything else electrically. And I've got a wire connected to the back of this one, and I'm gonna plug it into uh, an EHT power supply. That's extra high tension or a power supply that can give out uh, at least 5,000 volts. And the one on this side, um, I've connected it via a red lead, and I'm gonna connect that to the positive of the uh, EHT power supply. And then fairly soon, I'm gonna turn it on and put 5,000 volts across this gap. But what I've got in the gap is a ping pong ball. And this ping pong ball has been painted with a special paint that makes it silver coated. So the ball itself becomes metallic on the outside. And what I want to do is I want to take the ball and see what happens when I turn on the power supply. But before we start the experiment proper, I want to show you one more thing. And it's really a matter of health and safety. I've got a 5000 volt power supply here. And if I just remove the uh, ping pong ball from the experiment and bring the plates together, I want to show you why I'm not touching them with my fingers. If you look closely between the little gap, you might be able to hear, and if I move them a little bit closer to each other, you might even be able to see a little spark going between them. I'm not sure how well the spark shows up, but you'll notice it's purple, but I think um, whether lightning's white or purple is probably the subject for another video. But that's quite a high voltage. It's enough to cause the air to break down over that distance. So I'm being pretty careful that when I do the experiment, I don't touch these metal plates at all. So here goes, let's turn on the power supply. So I'm gonna turn it up, you'll see the red LEDs coming on and it's gone right up to 5,000 volts. So I have to be a bit careful not to touch the metal plates and nothing happens. But what happens if I touch the ping pong ball gently onto the negative plate, that's the black one here, and then let go? Well, straight away you can see why I call this one the ping pong ball clock. Uh, but it'll need a bit more explanation for me to explain to you why I call it an electrostatic clock. Uh, but you might be surprised by what's going on here. So there's a few things that we can do before I do an explanation. And one of them is to look at what happens when we turn the voltage down a bit. And also what happens if we make the gap between the two plates just a little bit narrower. So I said what I was going to do was see what happened when I turned the voltage up and down and also when I reduced the distance between the plates. So the first thing I've done here is I've actually reduced the gap between the two plates. So I'll turn the voltage back up to the 5000 we had before and restart the clock and you see if you think you know what might happen. So I'm not sure if you guessed correctly, but we've reduced the gap and what you notice is that the ball bounces between the two plates much more frequently. The frequency of the oscillation has gone up. But of course, whilst we've got it there doing that, what we might do is turn down the voltage a little bit. And then what I'll do is turn up the voltage. So I think what we need is an explanation of what was happening. So let's see if I can explain this. It's really a bit of A-level physics, but in fact, it's not too difficult to explain. So let's have a go. So the first thing you need to know is that this plate here is very negative, and therefore it has an excess of electrons, which are negative. And this plate is very positive and is short of electrons. So when I turn on the power supply, if I touch the ball against this plate, 
it gains negative electrons and those negative electrons repel. So the negative electrons on the ball will repel the ball to the positive plate. But of course, then the electrons flow off onto the positive plate and the ball itself gets short of electrons and now becomes positive and repels. So this process goes on backwards and forwards. In other words, the ball touches the negative plate, becomes negative and repels, touches the positive plate, becomes positive and repels. And that process goes on and on for as long as there's a voltage across the gap. In other words, the power supply is turned on. So taking this explanation just a little bit further, there's one other thing we need to explain. The power supply provides a very large voltage and that voltage appears across this gap. There's about 5,000 volts between here and here and that voltage is across a certain distance. So if there's a difference in potential between those two places, there's an electric field. And rather like gravity pulling on masses, electric fields apply forces to charges. So the electric field in this gap makes the electrons in the ball feel a force and therefore pulls the ball across. All the opposite happens, of course, when the ball becomes positively charged, the electric field pulls it the other way. The electric field itself always runs from plus to minus, uh, but the ball can go either way because it's swapping its charge. But what I haven't explained is why did changing the voltage or changing the gap between the two plates affect what was going on? Well, the voltage acts over a certain distance and if we reduce the voltage, we reduce the electric field strength. So if I turn the voltage down, the ping pong ball feels less force and so goes more slowly. If I turn the voltage up and the electric field gets stronger, then the ball goes faster. However, when I put the plates closer together, so I'll try and move them slightly closer together, the voltage is over a shorter distance, so the electric field gets stronger. And you'll see the ball going faster and faster. So if I want the ball to go faster, I've got two options. I can either close down the distance between the plates, or I can turn up the voltage. And of course, the opposite is true. So I hope you enjoyed the ping pong ball clock and also now you've got some understanding of why I call it the electrostatic clock. Do hope you enjoyed that video and I look forward to seeing you next time.